Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we're looking at these, the Angelo Smart 2-pack wireless access points for Wi-Fi Halo bridging. Basically, it's a receiver and a transceiver and you can send data in between. What's really, really cool about these is that they are very, very low frequency, making long distances very, very possible. Now on paper, these say about one kilometer, a thousand meters, 3000 feet, I think. And it allows the speeds around three megabits per second up and down. So in today's video, we're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at these devices. We're also gonna do a bit of a test run in an urban environment. And then we'll talk about the actual use case and how I suggest you can use it. So let's get started by rolling the intro and letting you guys know that I purchased these. They are not sent for review and I'm just really, really excited to share this with you. Let's get started. Okay, let's take a closer look. Both of these are technically the same, but they are tagged as a receiver and a transceiver. You can pop off the side here and get inside. This actually came completely open from the get-go, so it's not like I'm breaking it apart. Inside, we'll find the antenna connected and the 860M chip, which allows the low frequencies that this works on. We've got a power and we've got the ethernet port, and then we've got a couple of switches that allow us to sync it to another receiver. Technically speaking, you can put these in different combinations. Now this can be divided into two parts, the AP transmitter and receiver, and it can be freely matched with any receiver and receive up to four transmitted signals at the same time, which make this a very useful way to connect multiple IP cameras around your property with using only one set of these. And you can swap this using the switches here to be just a receiver or just a transceiver. These Wi-Fi Halo network bridges work on the 902 to 928 megahertz frequency, which is a little bit interesting because Australia I don't think has allowed these frequencies to be used. As far as I know, it's really available in the rest of the world bar Australia, they're quite strict in these. So the fact that they've arrived in Australia is surprising, but maybe they won't be able to be used for non-home applications. Like nobody's gonna get angry at you if you're using this on your property, but it is not certified to be working in Australia. The antenna is omnidirectional and to improve the signal, you can actually add a different antenna. This is a standard bit, so you can potentially get a bigger one or an extension cable to run this to a higher point in your home or your property. Now, according to the documentation, the actual transmission is encrypted algorithmically, and so it can't be picked up you know, in between. I really have my doubts about this, but I don't really have a way to test it. Now, lastly, I'm gonna break a bit of the clickbait that I've got in here. I don't think this can go one kilometer. I think the max is 500 meters. After reading documentation and a little information about this chip, I think to get one kilometer or at least 900 meters, you have to have line of sight and the antennas need to be upgraded. With the antennas provided and the spec of this chip, I think 500 meters is the most we're gonna get. So uh, let's get testing and see how far we can get the good thing about low frequency is that it can make through multiple walls and obstructions, specifically things like trees and buildings. And that's what I'm hoping for. 500 meters max with lots and lots of trees and homes in the way. So this is an urban environment that we're gonna be testing in. So let's get started and get on the road. Okay, so the transceiver is up on the roof. There is a power and an ethernet cable going down into the computer that's running an open speed test server at this IP address. Then we look at the receiver right here, which is also powered, connected to this laptop right here, and it's got the open speed open at 192.168.1.100, and we can click start and we can do a bit of a speed test between the receiver right here and the transceiver up on the roof. So we're only about two meters away from it right now, and we're getting pretty good speeds, a fairly good ping, a good jitter. Uh, overall, I think it's a, I guess it's pretty good performance. 
We'll see the upload jump a little bit. It seems to do that a lot. I don't know why. I know this receiver and transceiver can do higher speeds at 4.9 and 4.9 for the upload, but we'll see what happens. So we're gonna take this laptop on the road, connect it to the car power, and we're gonna drive around at 100 meter intervals and see how much speed we get. And of course, the problem here is, well, we've got a lot of houses, a lot of trees, and we're gonna see how it performs in an urban environment. All right, first stop, and you may be wondering how I'm powering this. Well, my Prado has a normal wall plug here, so I can power the antenna. I'm just keeping it out of the car right now, and we can do our first test. So uh, let's go press start. So this is 100 meters. We've got a connection. Yeah, three megabits, 2.2, and that's not too bad, 3.5. The antenna is just above here on the car. Uh, we need to keep it out from the inside of the car because it's pretty much a Faraday cage. Let's have a look. Oh, upload. It's pretty incredible actually. Bounces around, but settles down at three. So that's three and three for a hundred meters. Let's uh, move up maybe to 200, 300 meters. Let's see how far we can get. Okay, we're at 200 meters and we do actually have a connection still and we can now press start and let's have a look at what speed. Hey, that's kind of better. Oh, there you go, it's dropping. And it's not bad at all. At 200 meters down the road between about two sets of houses, two streets of houses, and a whole bunch of trees. This is an excellent, excellent, uh, I guess, speed. Damn. Okay, I'm gonna keep going to uh, about maybe 300, 400. Maybe I need to skip to 500 meters. We'll see. Oh man, I am so impressed. We're connected. We're about 350 meters or 300. I'll, I'll confirm that later, but look at that. Three megabits a second. I guess the further away you might be, the speed might get a little bit better because maybe it's higher or lower. And this is impressive. I'm so impressed. Holy crap. Five megabits a second, six megabits. Ah, oh, yeah, I get it. Look, four and four, uh, that's perfect. I, I would not be complaining if that was connected down to maybe my shed or maybe another part of your property that's, you know, 400 meters away, 300 meters away. Let, let's keep going. I want to see how far I can get this. Okay, folks, we are now at 450 meters away from the house and we're just on a, I guess the last road before I need to get onto the main road, which is pretty incredible. But they have it, we've got uh, quite a low speed, but let me just show you what I'm surrounded by. Trees, big trees. So this isn't really that bad and maybe if I can find another location that's further away, but without trees, I can get a higher speed. This is still pretty incredible for 450 meters. Okay, we're at 550 meters and it's not loading. The connection is non-existent. Oh no, wait, there's one light. It's flashing, but it's not really working. Okay, there's no line of sight. There's no trees, but the house is, yeah, it's way too far away. So. We're getting glimpses of a connection, but it's not happening. So 550 seems to be the limit without line of sight. Now I paid about a hundred Australian dollars for the two pack. They're actually half price now, and that also includes delivery. So I'll put the links below, and maybe you'll grab a deal if this is what you're gonna be using. So at 500 meters, the speed isn't great, but that is an urban environment with trees, houses, and different elevation. So what? is this actually for? Well, if you have a gate on a large property and you wanna send a signal to it so you can communicate with it and you know open it with an app or potentially have a camera set up near the front of your property and the house is, you know, half, let's say half a kilometer away from that gate, then these are perfect. They're very low speed, but they're able to connect at such large distances. You'll pop one of these in the front of the house, maybe at a higher location, and this one can be right next to the gate. Technically, these boxes are waterproof as long as they're vertically mounted because the area that's actually open and exposed is right underneath it. The only problem is they do need full power, which you can potentially convert that plug to be a USB plug, which is what I would hope this comes in next version. I don't really like the power that it's connected to. It should be USB. It's very low power. It shouldn't require any more than a USB.
What else can you use it for? Well, if you've got a shed and you want to connect some IoT devices and it's again far away, then this will do. If you want to run a low speed internet connection so you can watch YouTube or stream some music in a far away location like your man shed, then again, these are great. They're really low cost and they're small and they're easy to deploy again if you have power in that location. So ultimately this is advertised as an IP camera solution but you can use it for a variety of things that don't require high bandwidth and high speeds. You probably wouldn't be gaming on this, that's going to have an issue but the ping was only about 5 to 6 even at 300 to 400 meters. Friends thank you very much for joining, let me know what you think below, links below where you can grab this, I have no affiliate so go on, purchase it. And if you like this video, then smash the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you all later. Bye.